the Holland Project speaks to what I think is important in, in, the, in the world of dance. Um, if we don't share what we do and if we don't connect with people with what we do, then why do we do what we do? Being able to bring people together is, is what we've always strived for as a company. What the company's mission is um, to, to build community through the arts. That's what this project does. To use dance to, to make connections between people, between us and, and others, and to, to dance together, but also to you know, tell stories to each other and to find out who we are. And everyone deserves the opportunity to be involved in the arts, but also to, um, you know, to experience it as, as a participant. And it, it is important to me that ev everybody can be involved, whether that's um, children or adults, and whether that's professional dancers or apprentice dancers or community members. Um, you know, trained, not trained, yet. there is a place for everyone. Um, so I moved to Harlem in 2013 and I wanted a way to connect to the neighborhood and to, to the community that lived around me. And I wanted to have like a meaningful connection. Um, so I decided that dance is what we do as a company and what, what I've always done. So that, that was, that's the way to connect. And there's this amazing amphitheater in the middle of the park. It's like, well, we've got to do something with this. Like, this is incredible. Within the Harlem Project, we started out in 2016 working with the Children's Aid Society, um, and it's, it's expanded since. You know, we've been lucky, we work with organizations who, who also do the same. They're, they're very excited to have their young people involved, and so they're more than willing to schedule and give us spaces we need, and especially with the Children's Aid Society, we, we use their space, that's where we bring together our cast, and so having community partners counts. Harlem has a vibrant art scene. I think the Harlem Project is it's distinct and it's, it's different. We're giving the children and teens and young adults the chance to be integrated within a professional dance company, not just for a class, not just for a workshop, but for a performance project where there's a clear timeline from the beginning to the end and everyone has a hand in creating what is seen on stage. Out of our five ensembles, the group from Brooklyn, we have seven dancers. The group from the Bronx, we have 23 dancers. The group from Children's Aid, we have 10. The group, the Apprentice Ensemble, which is mixing together some of the company as well, we have eight. And then the company themselves, that's seven dancers. So total, if we count everyone, I, I think it's like 52. We actually get to like do an actual dance and have a real audience in here. We never danced with professionals before, so it's a new experience for us. This is the first opportunity I get to dance in a professional company, and then with the regular dancers, it's not really much fun. I hadn't known anything about being a professional dancer because I was never exposed to it. I think I saw one black ballet dancer in the New York City Ballet in a magazine, and that moment was the moment that made me think, wow, so it's possible for me to go. I, other than that, I, would have, I, I couldn't have done it. Um, so I think being their age and being able to be exposed and be a part of a professional show means everything. I really like dancing and I really like to dance with Mr. Matthew. He's not like rough and he's like as speaking. He doesn't yell at us and he treats us like actual students. He doesn't water down the material that the kids are involved in and that they're performing, you know, they're doing serious partnering, they're doing floor work, and that's something that children are not often exposed to, but they're really capable. And if you really challenge them and understand how smart they are and how hungry they are for this, they can really grow much faster. So I think that's a beautiful thing about this project. My favorite part about dancing now, we work together and I like how we help each other of what we're not supposed to do, but then we get it after a day or something. What we create in rehearsal together, you know, what the kids bring me and the, the, the stories they tell me and finding out about where their name is from, all of that gets fed into the dance and so what the dance looks like on stage has the imprint of quite literally everyone on stage. What happens on stage is we see that as the end result, but seeing the, the personal growth of, of each each person involved, everyone grows in some capacity. Uh, my name's Sylvester. This is my third year. It gives me insight to 
what professional level dancing would be for the future. It's been like a really, really, really fun experience. I just find so much enjoyment in it. We built like almost a family bond. We always started out as friends and then like now we're like, we call each other family. They can see like when we are company, we are professional, we are working together, we are there for the same thing and not like a competition, I want to be better than you because I believe as a company member, we want the company to grow together. We work together as a family. We've all taught at schools, we've taught outreach, we've taught um, at-risk kids. So we're not really just teaching them dance or just dancing with them, but we're actually sort of building confidence, building life skills, teaching them to lean on each other and that the studio is a safe place and your dance friends are people you can turn to. It helps with your, your social skills, it helps with confidence that you're gonna need in high school and college as a professional. So I think there's so many skills that they learn from this program um, that can translate into their everyday life. Good because I get to I get to show them that I that Mr. Matthew taught me a lot. He taught me a lot about dance and how to present yourself and not to be shy and also how to like introduce yourself to people. You know, did you become more confident? Did you did you find out something about yourself that you didn't know? Did you make new friends? Did you find your place in in the ensemble of performance? Like those, those things for me are like way more important than, you know, did you learn to point your feet better? You know, at the end of the day, that's not so important. We're really extraordinarily fortunate to have a giant stage like next door to where I live. So th this, in my head, this is, this is central to the project. And then, you know, the pop-up performances, that's something that can be kind of, you know, we, we go all over and we perform in different places each year. And, but really it's like the park is, is the center of, of what we're doing. Being, literally being outdoors presents all kinds of challenges that the first year we didn't even realize what they would be. Is it gonna rain? There's no electricity. How are we going to deal with that? In terms of producing the Harlem Project, logistically trying to bring together 53 performers and a crew of all hands on deck making the thing work. Um, planning a schedule, trying to get everyone in one place at the same time. It's a lot of logistical work. I'm really very fortunate to have the people in the company that I have who are m more than willing at any moment to just kind of jump in and be like, what do you need? Like, what can I help you with? Today was the first day we had all the dancers here, so it was like really a day to just push through. Through, through the process of the project, we get to work, you know, in our different groups, they, they all get to work with me in, in rehearsal. But then during like the final stages of the project, that, that ensemble, that cast gets brought together um, for rehearsal, but also for, for dialogue and for, you know, community building, so that by the time we get on stage, we're an ensemble of, of people, we're not just the group from the Bronx, the group from Brooklyn, the group from Harlem. We are an ensemble of, this year, 53 people. When they finally come and they, they meet the other performers, they realize that it's, it's bigger than just the group of kids they're in. It's like, this is, you know, it's, we're out there in the world and we're performing for the public and we're, we're sharing what we've created. It's been fun because I think they watch my professionalism and they try to copy the same thing. And then I get to watch them as well and they have this really like, very young, kind of innocent way about doing things. Um, so I think it's fun to play off of that as well. Yeah, so I learn from them, they learn from me. Dancing is like life to me. And like, I dance every weekend, every week at home. You have to have courage to participate in here. And you have to have patience and have self-control. Like dancing with a professional company, it feels good because I get to learn more dances from a professional dance teacher. We get to meet a lot of new people that's going to be dancing with us in the show. And it's really exciting because tomorrow's the show and we're going to see all those same people tomorrow. 
interesting to see the kids in their in their own little circles come together as they get ready for the performance and talk to each other and give feedback and that's important in everyday society. We're always going to be giving feedback to each other and this is an environment that they're learning to do that in. Watching them really kind of um, like take independence and take, take their own ownership of the material and of their sections to see them kind of go from these I don't know what's happening to I know exactly where I need, you know, where I need to be and when and that's always very exciting to me. It's really the culmination of the project is when you start to see the change. It's like, wow, like this is this is a big deal. And it's you see that level of excitement and nerves too. It won't actually hit them until tomorrow when they're on the stage, which is such a powerful experience because children don't really get to perform on a stage of that caliber and then have their family and friends watching them. It's a really fun and special experience. Tomorrow, tomorrow's a really hectic day. So uh, I've got to go to Home Depot in the morning and buy some cleaning supplies for the stage. Um, I'm going to go to the gas station and get some gasoline for the generator. We're then doing a pop-up show on the street at two o'clock. So figuring out all those things, but also just kind of like making it work no matter what. Um, I think it's kind of key to, to this. The weather for tomorrow, I've been tracking it for about four weeks already. Um, I, the kids haven't asked yet, and so I'm just kind of keeping that all in my head for now. There is a plan B, and the second we have to make a decision, we'll roll out plan B and then we'll, we'll adjust as we need to. Unfortunately, it's, it's a one-shot deal, and we just hope the weather is on our side and that we can, we can go ahead. Uh, trying to carry equipment to the park and I walked down one path, had to walk back, tried to walk down another path, walked back, all the paths were starting to flood um, and that was that was probably the first time where I was like I just don't think we can do this. You know uh, the welfare, of it, the safety of everyone is always like paramount importance especially when we're dancing outside. I think there, there came a point when I was like for everyone's safety like this is something that we have to do. As part of moving the performance, we also had to work around some things that were scheduled in the gym at the Children's Aid building. So we had to move 15 minutes earlier. Um, I tried to kind of drag it out as much as I could so that we could start closer to the performance time. If this is what makes it work, this is what we have to do. And from, from that point on, it was like, okay, well, someone needs to be on Facebook, someone needs to put this on Twitter, someone needs to you know, contact all the people that you've told the show is happening and tell them that the venue has changed and that we're starting earlier. And it was kind of like a mad dash to like, keep everyone informed, but also get ready for a show that is happening in, in less than an hour. So they told me afterwards that, you know, Mr. Matthew, we went by the stage because we wanted to see where we were going to dance. Every time I said we're going to dance on this big outdoor stage, I was like, they remembered and they were excited to go there, even if, you know, it didn't quite work out as we planned. But the fact they got so excited about the show and they were so happy to be a part of the project and that's the takeaway. They were proud of what they did. So whether it's in the park, in a gym, you know, it's secondary to, to what they got from it and how much they grew. Walking into the gym when when everything kind of went down and it was like, okay, this is, this is where the show is now. And we were like trying to get things done as fast as we could. Does everyone have a shirt to wear yet? Do we have audience coming in? Is the audience still waiting for us in the park in the rain? 
is the sound system getting set? Like, if I can just keep on dealing with all these things at once, it will come together. Once we were in the gym at Children's Aid and, you know, we had the things we needed there, the people were there, it was like, okay, we've got maybe 20 minutes before this thing is supposed to start. What can I do to make, you know, everyone feel confident, like, this is going to be okay and it's going to be great. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't exactly what we were aiming for because, you know, part of the point of the project is to put it in a public space where anyone can interact with the performance, anyone can see it. People that wouldn't, wouldn't normally want to come to a dance performance, they might physically see the performance going on and want to stop and be engaged by something they're seeing. Uh, once again, thanks for coming and enjoy the show. Getting to see the, the, the effect of being on stage in front of an audience and, and seeing what that does to them, especially when they're young, it's, you see, like, they understand what the goal was and they also understand that performing is, is exciting but it's also, it makes you anxious and how we deal with those emotions and, but you'll see them rise to the occasion. I'm proud of myself because um, how I, how I move on the, like, the stage with other people on you see how proud their families are and then how proud they are of themselves and the things that they've not only achieved but also learned about themselves and how they've they've learned how to meet new people and talk to each other and and it's just I choreograph some dance steps and then they they do all this like growing in the process and it's it's exciting to see. Matthew has persevered in keeping part of the mission of Matthew Westerby Company to be community building and education and to really develop the next generation. If I want to be a teacher, I could teach my students that about what I learned when I was a child. The more kids that we can get involved and give them this opportunity, you know, the more kids we can reach on, on so many levels, whether it's contributing to their personal growth as, as young people, to their academic success, to their to their their social skills, to you know, things that make a difference in their lives, things that give them confidence to, to be who they are. Every time we do the project, my goal is always to reach more people. Whether that's reaching more people as performers or as audience members. Um, engaging the community in what we're doing. Um, the goal is always to reach more people. So long as it, as it keeps being about the community, then we'll keep doing this forever.